Welcome to my cave of grading. It's, well, it's actually nothing at all like the back cave. The back cave is full of lots of cool gadgets and stuff, and this is mostly a place full of papers needing grading, and if I'm lucky enough, pens to get through the whole grading process. I've just been grading because I'm in the cave of grading. And I have some thoughts on the hazards of grading papers. I have nightmares. So I used to, when I was working on organic chemistry, have nightmares about, nightmares that contained no words and no people exactly, but somehow they, they had me right in the middle of nucleophilic attacks and it's, it's a very difficult kind of nightmare scenario to navigate when you're not used to being part of a molecule that's being attacked. Being a first order logic course I had an awful lot of nightmares that involved um, proofs where there were very few words or coherent thoughts, but there were a lot of um, formal relationships, and that sort of freaked me the heck out. I think tonight my nightmares are going to involve category mistakes, which is ironic because the paper I've been grading, uh, one of the things uh, that, that it is hoped was identified in the essay was a particular category mistake that one philosopher was making about another philosopher's view. In the process of trying to describe this one category mistake, in the process of struggling with very difficult readings, they're making some interesting category mistakes of their own. So I've been getting claims about theories and whether, whether properly scientific theories um, can be unobservable, uh, which kind of freaks me out because now I'm worried that uh, unobserved theories, unobservable theories, invisible theories are going to sneak up on me and get me. They're going to grab me by the knees and throw me to the ground, and that wouldn't be cool because in, in the non-nightmare world I live in, theories maybe talk about, I don't know, entities in the world that might be observable or unobservable, and if you like, you can haggle about whether there's a hard line between observability or unobservability. But as far as I know, even scientists who think there is a hard line and there's some entities in the world that we can't observe in a meaningful epistemic sense still want to say that our scientific theories that describe or try to describe these features of the world are themselves observable. And if the theories aren't observable, how the heck are we supposed to put them in textbooks for students to learn them?